Alright, so one of my subconscious policies on making videos is to not upload similar videos day after day. I know we made a video yesterday talking about Jack Eichel and Mitch Marner, but we have to break my subconscious rule because the Jack Eichel stuff has actually gotten so big over the past, like, 48 hours that I think it's only our obligation here to, at the very least, try to keep up with all the new insider information because we're just getting so much of it over the past few days. And with insiders like Elliot Friedman and Pierre Lebrun talking about how we might even see an Eichel trade before the playoffs end, I think it's only necessary that we start talking about who could be involved, the teams that are in, and in particular, in this video I wanted to focus on, the teams that are out. Because when it comes to who's in and who's out, Pierre Lebron had a big list the other day talking about teams that he feels could legitimately make a pitch in terms of what exactly the Sabres would want, and if the timeline of Eichel and his overall contract situation, young guy status and all that could align. It's a long list, but among these teams, there are some teams that apparently might not actually be interested anymore in general. So that's what we're going over here, teams that apparently might not be involved. And honestly, it's a pretty interesting conversation because a lot of these teams teams have been the teams that everybody's been talking about when it comes to a Jack Eichel trade over the past, like, year. So, we have ourselves three teams I wanted to focus on here, the LA Kings, the Boston Bruins, and the New York Rangers. And it's really strange to even entertain this kind of idea because, as I said, these are the three teams that everybody has been kind of defaulting to when it comes to a potential Eichel trade. Okay, if you want to get Eichel traded out of Buffalo, you need assets to come back the other way. What are the teams that could pay for those kinds of assets? Okay, New York. They have so many good young players on their roster. They could afford to send over a Kako or whatever, a Lafreniere, and something else for Jack Eichel. LA. They're in the same position, right? Quinton Byfield, Alex Turcotte, Gabe Velarde, Tyler Madden. Lots of young assets. And of course, you have to have Boston in there, right? Because Eichel's from Massachusetts. He's from Ma. So he's got himself a hometown connection to the Boston Bruins, right? But apparently, these teams might not actually want to be even in the Eichel sweepstakes. Let's go over with the LA side first, because this did come out earlier than all the others. We had ourselves that Elliot Friedman radio hit he did on the Instigator show, where he spoke about John Hoven and what he was saying when it comes to the LA Kings and Jack Eichel. He says that if John Hoven writes that the Kings are out on Jack Eichel, then there's a greater than 0% chance that that's exactly happening. If he's writing that, someone is very legitimately telling him that. That was a week ago. And when we had John Hoven, who was an LA Kings insider, report that, it was kind of thrown out in the air. Okay, maybe the Kings just don't want to be involved in the injury updates and the next surgery. Maybe it's not worth it for them to invest assets in a player that is of this status, where he is really good, but you don't know if you're even going to get the player at his 100% healthy capacity. To counter what Friedman discussed on the Instigator show, though, Darren Dreger actually believed the contrary that the Kings will circle back on Jack Eichel. But if that's the case, then you have to be kind of out of it in the first place if you want to circle back later on, right? So with all the stuff we've discussed right now, for all intents and purposes, let's just say that the Kings, as of today, are not in the Eichel sweepstakes. Now, that's fine. They should be okay either way. We did make our video talking about Eichel and the Kings and whether or not that would be a good fit, Long story short, Eichel getting added to any team would be great. But the Kings, even without Eichel, Kopitar, still pretty good. One of the only players to reach a thousand points, so that's cool. Good for him on the achievement. Not to mention the Quinton Byfields and the Turcots, etc. You still got a good center core into the long-term future. Not to mention the great wingers you have, too. Fajamo, Kaliev, Athanasiu, I guess. So there's a lot to look forward to in LA, even if Jack Eichel is not involved. But the other teams here I wanted to highlight as well kind of get my head scratcher in a little bit. Firstly, the New York Rangers. We had ourselves this article published on The Athletic by Rick Carpaniello the other day, talking about Gerard Gallant, how exactly he's going to fit in, and what's next for the club in the Big Apple. Now, this is The Athletic, so it's paid for material, but we're going over onto Spectre's Hockey to discuss what exactly is said by Carpaniello in this piece. 
It said right here, Rick Carpinello reports having heard that the New York Rangers are not likely, or at the very least much less likely now, to get into the bidding for Eichel. That was on the June 16th edition of Spectre's Hockey. On the June 17th edition, which was yesterday, Spectre kind of expands a little bit here. Carpignano, the Athletics Rangers writer, said that he has heard they're not likely or much less likely now to pursue Eichel. He didn't elaborate, but I suspect that's due to the recent front office shakeup and the hiring of Gerard Gallant earlier this week as their new head coach. So maybe... If you're a New York Rangers guy, you're in the organization, you're taking a look at what's going on here. Okay, we just got rid of a whole bunch of guys. We had that statement made that the NHL really didn't like. We have ourselves some other things we have to do. We hired Gerard Gallant. Do we really want to be dealing with a Jack Eichel negotiation on top of that? Dealing with the injury process of this guy, the surgery that he wants to get as well? With all this other stuff on our plate simultaneously? It's a pretty fair argument, I think. Especially if Carpaniello himself is reporting that he is hearing it's not likely, or much less likely now, that the Rangers go out there and make a trade like that. But the wording, you know, it's the wording once again, much less likely now. The implication is they were interested before, they're just not into it anymore. And so, if it is Gerard Gallant's hiring, and all the other stuff they have to deal with that makes them say, okay... Well, we're kind of busy in our own right. We don't really need this at the moment. Combined with the surgery and all that, doesn't really make too much sense to focus on that when we have our own extra stuff to deal with as well. Makes sense. And besides, just like the LA Kings, the Rangers don't need a Jack Eichel to do well, I guess. You still have Kako, you still have Lafreniere. In fact, Carpaniello made an article earlier talking about how the Eichel thing shouldn't even be considered. Just focus on Zabanajad. That's a completely different argument for another day, but it is something that people have been talking about. And so now we go over onto the last team, the Boston Bruins, Jack Eichel's hometown, technically hometown? I don't know if it's hometown, really. Eichel said he was actually a Habs fan growing up, I think. So it's not really the Boston Bruins that appeared, at the very least, to have his greatest affections growing up. But we had ourselves another article on The Athletic, the Bruins offseason priorities, Jack Eichel interest, all those UFAs, a goalie transition, and more. Again, it's The Athletic, we're not going to talk about it here, but Spectres Hockey has our little review that I wanted to highlight here. Bruins insider Fluto Shinzawa believes the Boston Bruins will pass on Eichel because of his neck injury. A $10 million player has to be a sure thing, he wrote. Joe Haggerty on a Boston Hockey Now piece dismissed any talk of the Bruins acquiring Eichel as fantasy stuff. And so, if you take a look at this right here, if Shinzawa, a Boston Bruins beat reporter and insider, is legitimately saying, yeah, I don't think they're going to do it anymore because of the next thing specifically, it would make sense to hear that as well, because the Bruins are the best team out of all the teams when it comes to the Eichel talks. LA, New York, all the other teams here, Philly, Minnesota, Boston, the Bruins are the absolute best team here, and there's no questions about it. So they are amongst the teams that don't need a Jack Eichel to participate in high-quality NHL play. Therefore, when complications like the surgery arise, especially with the complications there and the lack of guarantees, it's a lot easier to believe that they're not going to be involved. So that's our little video here talking about three teams, the Kings, the Rangers, and the Bruins, that apparently, according to some of the insiders that are in the know about these teams and their situations, might not actually be going for Jack Eichel. We'll be making more videos as the updates come out, because Pierre Lebrun, Elliot Friedman, they all have a lot to say about this Eichel thing, and we've been hearing so much coming out about teams that might be interested, players that might be involved, all that stuff is huge. So because of the frenzy that we're seeing with Eichel news every single day, we're going to try to keep up with it. It's breaking my own personal rule, as I said at the beginning. I don't like to make simultaneous days worth of videos covering similar topics, but this is probably the best player who is on the trade market in a very long time. So I think it's kind of worth it here. Talk to me in the comments what you think about the Eichel thing. These three teams, Bruins, Kings, and Rangers, I've seen a ton of you in my comment section below who cheer for these teams and have been expressing their likes and dislikes about the idea of going for an Eichel trade. So with the final nail in the coffin here, the Kings might circle back, but apparently they're not in it right now. The Rangers are less likely to do it, and the Bruins just don't want to keep up with that surgery. Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.